What is up guys, it's Midwest Raider coming at you with another video for my channel. So today I got a little something, a little curveball for you, but it's still in the DJ realm. So I am Midwest Raider, DJ Martini Midwest, uh, DJ Martini uh, Services on Facebook, and DJ Martini Midwest.com. Check that out. All right, guys. I just want to start off with uh, how's everyone doing? Hope everybody's doing good. And, um, you know, keep on keep on going guys uh, keep busy and uh, keep positive and uh, you know keep doing those projects out there guys um, so let's talk about our topic today today I got some good tips for you and I also just want to talk a little bit about the history of DJing and this just popped in my head because we've all and it kind of it's been bothering me a little bit because you know I just like well how could I explain that a little bit um, because you know you've all heard it you know even as a mobile DJ or whatever DJ you are, you probably heard it that you get that one person in there that's like, oh, an iPod could do your job, um, and you know, blah 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 blah, um, and you and you get those comments, whatever. So you know, most of the time you can just shake it off and keep going because you've been a DJ for a while and you kind of know what you're doing. Um, and then here's another point. So then you get the person that thinks he's a DJ too when he's around his friends and you're playing music and he pops in and he says, play this song. This will keep everybody on the dance floor. And you look at him like, okay, awesome. Yeah, maybe I'll get it in a little bit later. And then you either can play it or not play it, but you know in your heart that you everybody in that per, in that crowd, because you know, it's going to leave the dance floor as soon as you play that song. So there's people that want to talk smack and everything, and you just got to take it for what it is. Um, and, you know, use it or don't. And, you know, in all honesty, later on in the night when, you know, maybe people are taking a break and, and you actually need a break, um, you might, I would slip that song in. I honestly would. I would slip that song in unless it's too crazy but I would slip that song in and then I would go take a quick break uh, that's how I would that's how I would do that and I have done that before and as soon as I did that it's exactly what happened uh, there was nobody on the dance floor so uh, there's just some things that you can't uh, you have to learn a little bit more uh, than could be like taught to you and uh, it's just gonna take a little bit over time and we'll get to those three tips a little bit later but I just want to talk about the history of DJing it's not gonna be like super dry in depth on uh, dictionary standards here but uh, it's just gonna be a little information because like I honestly think that people don't know some of these uh, newer DJs don't know exactly where DJ came from you know um, so I think it's important to know a little bit that way we can all be on the same page and if you're watching this let's just get into it a little bit all right so like i said i'm not going to name names or inventions or anything like that i just want to kind of go through the timeline a little bit and, and just tell you what a dj is okay so in the 1940s and it basically started with radio stations um uh, they called them disc jockeys so a dj is a disc jockey guys and he basically played vinyl they called them vinyl discs. Uh, um, so he played vinyl popular music recording. So it's music recording on that vinyl. And he played it on the radio or he played it at a music event. So that's what a DJ is, guys. We play popular recorded music at an event. Okay. It doesn't say anything about mixing. So you can be a DJ and play popular music. It doesn't say anything about mixing music together. All right. Uh, so you just play popular music, okay? You're a DJ. You're a radio DJ, uh, and that's kind of where you're at. You're a disc jockey. So it's as simple as that, guys. So, yes, anybody could be a DJ if you play popular music, okay? But here's what gets a little bit more involved, okay? So in the 1940s, like I said, we're still there, but a little bit later, uh, this guy was credited for playing multiple pre-recorded songs on discs on multiple turntables so he was keeping it going he was coming to the seamless transitions okay guys and that's what kind of puts a little bit more skill in there is making music uh re doing the re popular recorded music 
at an event and making seamless transitions, okay? It's as simple as that. Um, that was in the 1940s, okay? Using multiple turntables, which is actually a pretty good skill, guys. If you guys have ever picked up vinyl and played each song, you have to go to the, you know, the, the tabs and drop the vinyl in, in the right tabs to get to the correct song. That takes a little skill in itself. My, my dad DJed back in the day in the 70s and uh, the late 70s or early 80s. And that's kind of where I picked up the bug to be a DJ. Um, and he would play music off vinyl. And I did see the skill in just getting and picking the songs and then, uh, you know, seamless transitions with no dead air. So it doesn't have to be beat matched. It just has to be no dead air, dead air you know. So you're going from one song to another song nonstop, keeping the flow going and uh, keeping people out there. All right, which is a skill in itself, and we'll talk about that later, guys. All right, so then in the 1960s, we started getting more involved and started using different tools, okay? And I just want to read this. So playing pre-recorded music on records using multiple turntables with continuous play. So that's where we're at with the DJing. So in the 1960s, they started using different things. You know, we started uh, upping our game, and the first mixer was made. Um, and that mixer is what helped you make some of those seamless transitions because you could fade in one song and out another, you know. So pretty, pretty cool stuff, guys. And um, I was in the set. I was born in the, you know, 80s, but I did see my dad DJ a little bit. Um, so like I said, that's what I got the bug. And I really wanted to try to do some of that stuff later in life. And it took me a while to get there. Um, you know, I was played around at home, but it took me a while to get there to actually go out and try to uh, do gigs and stuff. So, all right, guys. So now uh, what we've used is records, final records, tapes, you know, tapes were back in the day. We used tapes, went to CDs. Now we're using digital audio. Uh, we went from using, you know, record players, tape players, CD players, CDJs, uh, to laptops now and now we can even use tablets and phones we're just getting crazy with the technology right right so using all that stuff now we're getting into what type of DJs are there now there's a lot of DJs that focus on different things and this is where we get into the debates about who's better and blah 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 um, we're all DJs guys we're all DJs okay and um, you know, some might be better than others. Um, some might have different skills, like I said. And if you're not trying to pick up some new skills all the time, then you're hurting yourself by not trying to learn more and, and learn how to do some of those other skills and be wide range of, uh, you know, it only helps make you be a better DJ. But just because you don't know some of that stuff doesn't mean you're not a DJ. Okay, guys, so don't let anybody tell you different. Just know in have confidence in your skills and how you uh, do things when you perform out there and you will grow, okay? So let's talk about the different kinds of DJs here. So started off with radio DJs. Then you had, you know, party DJs, club DJs. Uh, you got turntablists. You got mobile DJs, mobile DJs. We bring our equipment and we do events out there. You got... Uh, producer DJs, which are actually like literally making the music and then mixing uh, different, you know, tracks together with their own music or with uh, other people's music. Uh, bedroom DJ, you know, we've all heard of that. That's, you know, any DJ out there that just likes to mix songs together and, and mess around and then maybe occasionally puts them online. All right. And then there's, you know, the skills within those club DJs or radio DJs or turntablists or whatever, uh, you might want to do some beat mixing, you know, you, you're going to mix those in, instead of just no dead silence. Um, you Maybe you want to, you know, transition those by beat matching the songs together so they kind of roll together, transition into them. Um, you might scratch them out, you know, um, scratch DJs definitely have skills and it is a very hard skill to learn and it takes much time to practice and learn. I am no turntables at all, but I definitely know how to play vinyl, and I definitely know how to do some simple stuff. Um, 
uh, and I keep trying to learn and practice as much time as I have. I try, um, so it definitely helps. Um, but uh, like I said, as long as you keep learning, you're having fun with it, and you're doing the best you can, that's all you can do, guys. So anyways, so those particular skills, uh, you know, transitioning FX, doing all those types of things are only going to make you a better DJ. So very, very cool, guys, okay? Um, so the key things is no dead silence and seamless transitions, okay? So let's continue on to my three tips within all this, okay? All right, guys, three tips from me that will make you a really good DJ, especially if you're a mobile DJ. Um, so let me explain this. These three tips are from me as a mobile DJ um, and are very important. They're a little hard to teach uh, because they're more, they more have to be like learned over time and doing gigs, guys. That's the only way you guys are gonna learn. So don't be nervous. Go out there, play for your friends. It's the easiest way to do. Go backyard parties, whatever, you know, uh, even if it's a couple friends hanging at a, people's houses, play some songs and your friends will say, oh yeah, I like that song. And the other friend, oh yeah, I like that too. That'll help you guys learn, you know, how to do some of these steps that I'm gonna be teaching you. Or, or not really, like I said, teaching you, but just telling you they're very, very important and I'm just trying to help. So uh, maybe I am teaching a little bit. Uh, so anyways, let's get there and let's start with number one. Okay, and let me explain this number one, music knowledge. So music knowledge is very, very important when you're a mobile DJ because we go out and play events. We play random events. We can play uh, church events. We can play um, weddings. We can play corporate parties. We can play, you know, all kinds of stuff. Now at these events, you're going to have a random uh, age bracket. You know, you're not going to have um, just like say in the 30s. You're not gonna have people that are only 30. You're gonna have people that are, uh, little people that are five and uh, older people that are maybe 80 or 90, okay? You're gonna have a wide range of people at these events. So you're gonna have to have a wide range of music knowledge. It just comes down to that, guys. Um, so music knowledge is very important and you're gonna have to know, you know, decades of music. You're gonna have to, which, you know, like your eras, you're going to have to know genres too so you're going to have to know uh, popular music from each of those it's very very important it's only going to come from listening to music guys you got to really love what you do and and just listen to all kinds of music you got to love music and i think that's what helps me is i love music it doesn't matter what kind of music it is i love it um, there's particular ones that i like more than others of course um, but i love music and that's what helps me is because i'm I can, you know, hear a song and I'm like, oh, that's that's a hit, man. That's a that's a good song. Um, so knowing, you know, 50s and 60s, 70s, 80s, 90s, 2000s, knowing all the brackets of music and knowing particular hits within that, uh, with within those decades or whatever. Um, so knowing popular music and knowing you know what works, okay, and that'll come in a little bit later. So let's talk about music selection now. So we're at a little bit later. Uh, music selection is my number two tip. Very, very important, guys. Music selection, knowing what works. Okay, so when I go to a gig, music selection is very important. So selecting the right songs at the right time and like I said that's only gonna come with going to go out and do it going to DJ and how I started like I said I started in high school when I was playing uh, actually like junior high I started playing music for my friends and realizing what each person because you probably have the same friends that you go to these same parties all the time but I would pick up songs each person like and I would literally go ask them like hey what do you listen to uh, what songs do you like and I would pick up songs from each person and I would, you know, compile that knowledge. And then when I went to a party, I knew exactly what to play for each person. And I, throughout the night, uh, it wouldn't be the same song every party because I knew what, you know, artist or the type of music that, that person liked. So then I was able to play to that. Now, same thing when you are at a gig, uh, you're going to have to play certain songs that appear to different people. Now, I have some particular songs that I call Party Heat, and that's where I got from 
high school, I would, you know, pick the songs for them and I'd say, oh yeah, that's going to be party heat because I know that's going to make that person react. Okay. So same thing, excuse me. Uh, same thing for other people. Um, there's certain songs that you know you're going to get a reaction from everybody. So those songs are part of heat and they can help you every time, but you're going to only learn those over time. And that comes to my third tip, reading the crowd, reading a crowd. Okay. That's going to come with all those. So music knowledge is going to help you music selection and then reading the crowd from those selections that you're making. Okay. So let me kind of just put a little expl explanation on this. So reading your crowd. So when I go to a gig, just a little bit of, here's a little insight, little tip. I'll play when I first start playing music, I'll play music in threes. Okay. Or twos or threes. So I'll start out with some oldies. We'll start off with maybe two or three oldies. Okay. And I'll see who's coming on the dance floor. Then I'll go transition that maybe into some country and I'll see who's coming on the dance floor. Then from that country song, I might pick a country song that might have a rap artist in it or might have uh, some kind of upbeat um, uh, beat that I can take into an R&B or rap song. Um, and then from there, I might trans uh, transition that into uh, maybe some uh, a slower song, um, see, kind of slow it and mellow it down, and then take it into maybe some classic rock. I'm going through the genres of music, and I'm seeing who comes out. So maybe at the end, boom, I hit some classic rock, and boom, the crowd, the crowd came in and, and wanted to dance. So guess what I'm playing that night? Um, I'm playing classic rock. I'm playing a lot of classic rock. I'm playing some rock. Uh, I'm playing some new rock, old rock. I'm going to feed the beast. I'm going to keep... Um, playing music that I know people are going to dance. Now, I'm not going to forget about the other people. If there was other people, I'm going to keep mixing in music and pleasing as many people as possible. But guess what? I'm me playing most of the night. I'm me playing classic rock and everything involved with classic rock, okay? Because music selection, music knowledge is going to help me know what to play within there, okay? So, those are my three humongous tips for you guys music knowledge, music selection, and reading the crowd. Very hard to teach and only going to come with experience and time. Um, so, but I hope the things that I explained within those kind of help you get on the right uh, direction, guys. And I wish, uh, I wish I could have had uh, someone explain that to me a little bit because it just came over time. Uh, like I said, um, liking music and playing music for people at parties okay so i'm glad i was able to get this out to you i feel a lot better um getting some knowledge out having some fun making these videos for you i'm building my channel guys please like subscribe share out there that uh you know i'm hanging out with you guys and i'm making some videos trying to keep it simple uh to the point and just you know bring some knowledge to you guys so i have more videos coming as always, uh, I like to be on here and make some videos. Please like, subscribe, share. That's all I ask. And enjoy the ride with me. Um, so this was just a little bit of history on DJing and some tips within there. And the only reason I wanted to bring you a little bit of history is just to let you guys know that no matter what people say to you guys, um, no matter if you're just learning, don't let it don't let it discourage you guys. Oh, an iPod could do that job. Well, yeah, an iPod can play music, and that's what DJs do. We play pre-recorded music, and we keep the music going, so we keep songs going. That's what a DJ is. So, yes, technically that's what we are. We play pre-recorded music, and we make seamless transitions, so we just keep the music going. And that's a DJ, so yes, that's what I am. I am a DJ. All right, guys, and that's all it takes. So... The better you get to your music knowledge, your music selection, and reading a crowd, the better DJ you'll be. You'll get good um, compliments at the end of the night, and that's all that matters is when you get those compliments at the end of the night and say, hell yeah, we had a great time. Um, it's the best feeling. All right, guys? So that's all, all that matters, and that's why I kind of want to give a little bit of uh, background on that. That's all it takes, guys, is just to play music with no dead space, Play music all night long. Keep your crowd moving. 
and have some fun, okay? So thank you guys so much for tuning in. It's been Midwest Raider. Please like, subscribe, share. Just hit 400 subscribers. It's awesome. Uh, I appreciate all of you and all the feedback and support and, and good uh, feedback that you guys give me. So thank you so much, Midwest Raider. We will talk to you guys later. More videos to come. I'm out.